Ted McClelland here. All right, so uh, now that we've made the first one, um, got it all done, and, and my design is perfected as far as I want to take it anyway, <laughs> we'll move on and make the other uh, 10 or 11, I think. 10 or 11, I can't remember for sure. But um, anyway, I've already got, um, I've already taken video of doing the first four sets of cuts and uh, getting the sides set up. Um, I've got one more sheet, so I'm gonna cut another four out of that one sheet, and uh, or three or four, um, whatever I can get out of it. And uh, um, yeah, we'll get that all cut out and um, and possibly get some more cleats put up. Um, maybe not in this video, but maybe in another video. I wanna finish this wall. This wall has, has no cleats on it. And of course I want pretty much every wall and in the shop to have cleats um, it it makes storage so much easier and movable so there's there's one of them that's done <laughs> my video <laughs> see me waving at myself um anyway yeah so everything that's on that wall is on a cleat system so it makes it real easy to move around reorganize change things um, and nothing's really permanent of course I'll, I'll finish out that wall as well and eventually i'll get my dust collection system hung up too i have two dust collectors um, and i will be setting it up to where one of them is primarily for the table saw and router when i get that bent and when i get that made um, and then as well as the two workbenches or three workbenches that are going to be right behind me right there um, which aren't built yet so that's another video we'll have um, on down the line um, i've got a lot of stuff planned and and uh um, designed just nothing nothing come to fruition just yet but at least not not yet it's getting there so got to make a little bit more room on the floor um, I'll kind of show you the state of things re real quick it's it's a mess so I've got that's part of the reason why I want to get these husky things put up and hung is because my my floor is just full of stuff and there's some more stuck in underneath my shopsmith over there um yeah working toward getting a little bit more organized before i start building my workbenches because um, that's a pretty big project um, i think i'm gonna have four or five identical workbenches um, that can be attached together and leveled independently and so on and so forth um, it's pretty involved it's going to be a couple of different videos i'm sure but uh we'll get there um <coughs> anyway so now i'm going to continue to um to cut out the rest of those boxes or parts for the drawer system for my husky stackables and um, um and then i'll probably do another video of actually putting them all together so here we go All right, well, we're starting off with a new mic. Hopefully you can hear me better than you could in the last video. Just uh, right now I'm just cutting the cleats and the sides and back and front for the drawers, Any, pretty much everything out of three quarter inch. And I'm just set up with the 40 degree angle for my cleats. I chose a 40 over a 45, no particular reason. Uh, wouldn't go anything less than a 40 really the 35 is it works but as long as you're not hanging out too far from the wall um, has a tendency to kind of sag away if it's too far out I'm using this uh, miter gauge here just to cut the cleats to length I don't typically use it for anything that has to be uh, very accurate um, it's kind of loose on the table I need to build a box but haven't <laughs> and now I'm cutting all the half inch material or starting to this is the sides and sides back bottom and the drawer bottom for each one of the boxes
whenever I'm doing projects like this, I try to use up as much of my scrap as possible uh, to get it all done. And here I'm using that jig that I set up in the last video. And I spent a little bit of time and wrote my cut list down on it. So if I run out of material, which I did, <laughs> I can pick it up later on and still have my cut list. And it's all in the same spot. I just put that jig on there with a couple of brads, just a little three quarter inch, just barely hanging on. It doesn't really need to stick on there very much. No sense in using any glue or anything. Just pull a few nails and for the application and what I'm using all this stuff for, a couple little nail holes isn't going to hurt anything. And there's a great view of the back of my head. Forgive me, folks, I'm still learning. And sometimes I just get to going on stuff and forget what I'm supposed to be paying attention to. Like right now, I'm working off camera. <laughs> uh, uh, it looks like we got a new day here. Figured out how to move the camera. got a good shot there of my of my sheet goods storage there it is that was actually some leftovers from my dad's last shop when he moved shops I took all the uh, all the materials for that he had it set up to where it was uh, so the sheets would stand on end and which was great for his shop, but for mine, um, it just seemed more economical to lay it on its side and, and be able to lay them down. And um, definitely a lot easier to maneuver, maneuver them around in the shop. Um, and I was able to put some uh, more storage bins on top of that for two buys and cutoffs and so on. Typically when I'm doing cuts like this, if I've got multiples out of a long sheet like that, I usually double up at least on the first uh, the first cut. I'll cut it double long and leave a little bit of material in there for the saw blade kerf. So a little bit easier to handle the material and not hanging off the saw so far. And I'm back to doing sides again. Just put a single hole right through the middle of the handle there instead of using a jigsaw to take out some of the material. If it would have been more material to take out, I would have spent a little bit more time. But for, for as much as there was, it was just a waste of time. And not that much of a... Yeah, not... Not much wear and tear on the router bit. And there's a little quarter round router bit to finish off the edges. I decided to do the sides before I put everything together just because there was so much more that needed to be routed on there. Here I'm cutting the fronts, the backs, and sides for the drawers. And then we're going to start putting everything together. Drawers first. Uh, the glue that I use is just a uh, indoor, outdoor. Um, you can get it wet. I kind of like that. Doesn't really matter too much indoors, but. It's a little bit thicker and it's got a little bit faster drying time. Um, seems to fill in the gaps a little bit better and it doesn't have near as much squish out. Um, it definitely doesn't drip as much. 
just using some 18 gauge inch and a half nails brads and the sides on these drawers I cut about 30 second too short so I'm just lining it up on the front so you can't see the back all right one more side to glue up there get it lined up a couple of brads on each each front and back and three or four more on the side nice and strong all right well we'll speed it up and get through the rest of those drawers and then we'll start on the bases All right, well, we got all the drawers built. Um, that's here what I just got done putting together. Uh, now for the main boxes. So I'm gonna be, uh, yeah, setting it on fast again and, and uh, we'll build up the boxes for you. <music> well, I just wanna take a quick second here again and uh, apologize for the camera angles uh, yeah <laughs> I probably should have done a couple more test videos anyway we'll uh, we'll get that fixed in the future it's a little bit a little bit different working in the shop than on my on my uh, leather workbench where it's pretty easy just to set the camera in one spot and let her go and uh, anyway yeah we'll uh, we'll move my camera camera around and get some better better views for the next next videos that uh that i haven't filmed just yet but again just bear with me i apologize we'll get her better in the future Also wanted to mention that uh, if you noticed I'm not using a square or anything to square these up but um, I've taken a lot of time to make sure that my tools cut things squarely so when it comes down to finish work like this I don't have to work so hard about making sure it's square um, if I was doing <clears throat> something for somebody else I'd at least throw one in there to make sure that it was set up right but like I said I take take a lot of time in my equipment set up and making sure that all that stuff is calibrated right so I don't have to work so hard after it's cut uh, anyway right now we're throwing the cleats on and <clears throat> getting the rest of this set up um, and then we'll tackle the putting the drawer runners in
all these uh, drill runners are the same, same ones I was using in the last video. Uh, just some run-of-the-mill Amazon orders type of stuff. I've used them before. They're not, uh, they're not the best, but the price is right. And if I've got to replace them after working in the shop for years, then they won't cost me that much. These first couple I'm doing are the ones with the dual drawer in them. And the first one that I put in, for some reason, it got fouled up trying to get that bottom drawer pushed in and it knocked out two or three of the ball bearings so that took me a little bit of time to fix it but that's what happens when you buy cheap stuff you gotta fix stuff of course it happens when you buy expensive stuff too you gotta fix that before you use it too sometimes anyway it's a good thing we know how to fix everything right This one here was giving me some fits too, but uh, I got through it. Uh, just about to wrap this video up. Um, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, I hope that your struggles are easier than mine are with this last one. <laughs> uh, but it all works out in the end. There we go. Uh, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.